So you're looking for machine learning projects. Well, in this video, we're gonna look at machine learning projects at three different levels. We'll start off with beginner level projects. We'll then take a look at some intermediate projects. And last but not least, we're gonna cap it off and we're gonna take a look at some advanced projects that you can use to get started with your machine learning, deep learning, or data science career. Let's do it. Right, so I am super passionate about projects. I think it is the key thing that you should do regardless of what type of development or coding you're doing. It is going to be the thing that allows you to go from a zero to a hundred real quick, particularly when it comes to advancing and building up your skills within a particular field. Now, this doesn't matter whether or not you're doing web development or you're doing deep learning. Doing projects is going to help you accelerate a ton faster. Like, I mean, there is going to be nothing else that helps you progress further than actually doing projects. Now, in this video, we're actually going to take a look at projects at three different levels, and they're going to be in reference to Ryan Reynolds' different characters. So we're going to start off and take a look at some beginner level projects. And really, these think of these as Ryan Reynolds in the Green Lantern. So, I mean, they're, they're good, but they're, they're not crazy great. We're then going to take it one step further and we're going to go into intermediate territory. So this is getting into Deadpool level projects. So you're going to need a little bit more skill and it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but that means it's going to be great. And then we're going to take it all the way to the max and we're going to take a look at some advanced level projects. And to be honest, I think when we're looking at these level projects, we're looking at the dude character from Free Guy. Am I right? Let me know in the comments. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each one of these projects and I'm going to link to different examples that you can actually give a crack in the description below. Some of them are going to be available on this channel. Other ones are going to be available at other places, but I'll link all of them below. You can give them a crack and actually start adding them to your GitHub portfolio because that is the second most important thing. Once you've done these projects, you really got to show people what you're doing, particularly in order to get value from it for your career. So remember that. So once you've done the project, make sure you share it and tell people about it. All right, without further ado, let's start with our beginner or Green Lantern level projects. So we've got three beginner level projects that I'm going to recommend you take a look at when you're just getting started. Now, a large number of these beginner level projects are going to be to do with working with tabular based data. So think about working with CSVs or working with Excel files. So the first project is learning how to predict churn. This is really important for most modern businesses because it's all to do with trying to predict whether or not a customer is likely to leave a business or not. Now, this is based on the fact that it costs a lot more to attract a new customer than to try to retain a customer. So this is why businesses optimize and really focus on ensuring they minimize how many customers they lose because it's a lot more cost efficient. And ideally, you want to ensure that you're delivering good customer value. So for this project, you're typically going to be working with a tabular based data set in Excel or CSV, and you'll have a whole bunch of customer features. And what you're trying to do is predict a one, whether or not a customer is churned or a zero, whether or not they're likely to stay with the business. So that is the first project to take a look at. The second project is a little bit different, but again, still has a large proportion of value when it comes to businesses. And it's all to do with forecasting a business's sales. Forecasting sales allows a business to better estimate what's likely to happen in the future and have a better idea of their cash flow because cash is king in most businesses. So when you go to forecast sales, ideally what you'll be doing is you'll be passing through a number of different product like features, whether or not you're running promotions, whether or not there's discounts on at a particular point in time, as well as different components when it comes to seasonality. So what proportion of the time of the year is it? Is it Easter? Is it Christmas? Those tend to be really, really important factors. And what you'll be doing is you'll be outputting a continuous value using a regression model. So this is all to do with predicting a continuous value. Now, typically you can do this with a scikit-learn model, and there's a whole bunch of algorithms that help support that. The Third project that I'd suggest you take a look at as a beginner is sentiment analysis and specifically take a look at working with the Twitter API. So this definitely allows you to extend out your skill set a little bit further because it gets you interactively working with different data sources that are out there. So working with the Twitter API is going to expose you with how to authenticate to different APIs and it's also going to teach you how to process different types of data and process JSON. So that's going to be the result of the data that you actually get back. Now, there's a whole bunch of different algorithms that support sentiment analysis, but I'd highly recommend 
you take a look at the NLTK library, which is available through Python, or potentially take a look at extending yourself out a little bit and seeing if you can do something yourself and build up your own sentiment like model. So what's going to be happening when you go to predict or produce one of these models is you'll be passing through your tweets as a series of tokens and you'll be outputting ideally a value between zero and one. So one being positive sentiment, zero being negative sentiment. Certain models break this out a little bit different into uh, objectivity and subjectivity as well. So those are our three beginner level projects. So predicting churn, forecasting sales and Twitter sentiment prediction. So this brings us to our intermediate level projects or really starting to get into Deadpool territory. So the first intermediate level project is really going to start stretching our boundaries and get us into computer vision. Now, this particular project is actually available on the channel and it is all to do with automatic number plate detection. So if you've ever walked into a new style supermarket and you've actually gone and haven't actually received a ticket, this is because those supermarkets are starting to use something called automatic number plate recognition. The camera is scanning your car, it's extracting the number plate and it's actually extracting the text from that number plate to be able to check your registration against their ticket based database. So the way that you actually do this is using computer vision. So first you actually use an object detector to determine where the number plate is. And then you can actually use a optical character recognition algorithm to actually extract the text out of that plate from there, really the world's yours. So you can start to do a lot with it and use that number plate text to go on out there. So our second intermediate level project is actually using a really advanced model in the background, but actually allows you to get started with a little bit less difficulty. So this is all to do with text generation using transformer models. Now transformer models are completely shaking up the deep learning world because one, they're a lot faster and two, it requires a lot less training and three, they're a lot more accurate than traditional deep learning like techniques. That being said, you can actually get started with them relatively quickly using a library called Hugging Face. The cool thing about this is that you can actually pass through some text and actually have it generate new text for you. So say, for example, you wanted to um, generate a summarization based model or say, for example, you wanted to get your machine learning model to write a poem. The Hugging Face Transformers models actually allow you to do a whole bunch of really, really cool stuff and start exposing you to the world of natural language processing. So there's a whole heap of opportunity there if you're particularly interested in working with natural text. Our third intermediate level project is starting to get a little bit more active. And this is all to do with exercise correction using key point or landmark detection. The cool thing about the deep learning world is a large number of organizations share their open source models out there with the community so you can actually get started. Now, MediaPipe is actually one of those libraries which actually gives you some really, really sophisticated deep learning libraries that you can actually use to go on ahead and start building out your own models. Now, I've actually built up one of these models on the channel so you can actually go on ahead and actually build a bicep curl tracker. Now, again, it probably doesn't have too much business value, but it is a really, really cool project, which actually has a really visual component. So you can actually see the impact of your machine learning model counting bicep curls. The fourth intermediate level project is comment toxicity classification. So this is again going down the natural language path. So you'll be passing through a series of tokens or really a sentence and you're trying to determine different levels of toxicity. So when you think about uh, how Facebook actually processes comments, and tries to flag comments which maybe aren't conforming to its expectations or um, comments which are a little bit mean or bullying like this is a great example of where you can use this and again this has a bunch of applications could implement it on your own web apps you could um, scan different blocks of text if you're working with schools again something super important when it comes to minimizing the impact of bullying now the way you'd actually go about this is you again you'd convert your sentences into tokens but you might actually take a slightly more sophisticated method than rather just replicating what you did for Twitter. You could actually build your own deep learning model to ascertain whether or not or different levels of toxicity. Uh, so I know there's a couple of data sets out there that actually break toxicity down into different components. And again, I'll link to that data set in the description below. All right, so those are our four intermediate level projects. So we had automatic number plate detection, text generation using transformers, exercise correction using media pipe and key point detection, as well as comment toxicity classification. Now, 
this brings us to our dude or advanced level projects. So there's going to be five projects that I'm actually going to reference here. And again, the majority of these are going to be available on the channel so you can actually give them a crack yourself. The first one is one that I'm actively working on right now and building up from scratch, and that is image super resolution. I think this is so, so cool because you can actually pass through a low resolution, small image and train a machine learning model to actually enhance it. So it's almost like uh, having your very own sort of Jarvis like technique. So you can pass through an image and go enhance. And it's going to return a high resolution image. The way it does this is using a generative adversarial neural network. So what we do is we take high resolution images and then we actually turn them to crap. So we actually blur them and rescale them so that they're actually smaller. And then we pass it to a specific type of neural network called a GAN. And we train that neural network to be able to enhance it to produce a higher resolution image. So again, you could actually implement this on your website if you had some people that uh, wanted to boost the quality of their images. This is another great example. The second advanced project is leveraging or building your very own game machine learning model using reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is something I'm super passionate about, and there's a whole heap of different applications for it out there that you can actually get started with. But really, it's all to do with teaching a machine learning model how to interact in order to maximize its outcome. So this is a great application when it comes to playing games. So if you wanted to say, for example, teach a machine learning model how to play Flappy Bird or how to uh, play Space Invaders, this is the exact space where you can go and deploy a reinforcement learning model. Uh, and it's one that we've actually done on this channel. So we actually taught a reinforcement learning agent to one, land a spaceship. We also taught it how to um, play Space Invaders. We taught it how to optimally change our shower temperature to give us the best possible shower. So there's a whole bunch of use cases when it comes to reinforcement learning and for practical projects. The third advanced project is one which helps to bridge the gap between different cultures, and that is neural machine translation. So you can actually build machine learning models that are able to translate languages, so natural text, into a completely different language. So there's a whole heap of opportunity when it comes to this, but ideally what you'll be passing through is a sentence or string of tokens and your machine learning model will be sequentially generating new tokens to convert that into a different language. So I don't believe we've done this one in the, on the channel, but I will link to this in the description below for some examples where you can actually get started with that. The third advanced machine learning project that you can take a look at is action recognition. So if you've ever seen object detection tutorials, you can train models to be able to detect your phone and detect different objects. But action recognition actually takes this one step further. So rather than taking a single frame and asking our deep learning model to determine what objects are in that frame, when we're performing action detection, we're actually passing through a sequence of frames and going, based on this sequence, what is the action actually being performed? So again, it takes a little bit further. Now, there's a whole bunch of use cases for this. So say, for example, you wanted to uh, perform sign language detection to so determine what a particular person is signing, or if you wanted to actually use it to classify threat-based detection. There are a whole bunch of different projects that you can actually take a look at in terms of when it comes to performing action recognition. And this brings us to our fifth and final advanced machine learning project that you should take a look at, and that is neural style transfer. So if you've ever seen a Picasso or a uh, Monet style painting, you know that they have very specific styles. Now, neural style transfer allows you to take the style from a painting and overlay it onto another image. So you could actually produce a Picasso-like photo of yourself. Now you can actually train again a generative adversarial neural network to be able to go and perform that style transfer on a number of images which again gives you the ability to be a little bit more creative when it comes to performing machine learning and on that note that is our fifth and final machine learning project that you should do in order to go and add to your portfolio so we took a look at five different ones so those were image super resolution using gans building game AI using reinforcement learning, performing machine translation, sports and action recognition using a whole bunch of other different use cases. And last but not least, neural style transfer using generative adversarial neural network. And on that note, that does wrap up all of our different machine learning projects that you can get started with. So again, we took a look at our beginner level projects, 
for our Green Lantern style projects. Took a look at our Deadpool intermediate projects. And last but not least, we took a look at our dude character advanced projects. And on that note, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell and let me know what you thought of this video. I am trying out a bunch of different types of content. I mean, you've seen me do a couple of streams, a couple of shorts. I figured I'd do a little bit of informational based stuff like this video. Let me know if you like it. I don't know. I'm just trying it out, but who knows? We'll see where it goes. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.